Jim here, and uh, right now I'm in uh, the lovely, lovely area of Shinjuku. It's a nice, bright, sunny day. Uh, so we're gonna do, I guess, what people normally do on uh, bright, sunny days. Uh, we're gonna go look for some video games. Uh, in particular, today we're gonna go to the Sudagaya located here in Shinjuku, which uh, I haven't been to in quite a long time, but the last time I was there, uh, I was fully loaded with games and consoles and stuff. Uh, picked up a lot of stuff. Uh, so it's, it's not far from here, maybe about a 10 minute walk from the east gate of the station. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head down this way on San Tome, I believe. And in about 10 minutes, uh, we'll be at Asutagaya, hopefully uh, digging through a whole lot of video games. So stick around because that's what's coming up next. I do say so myself. Uh, beautiful day. A lot of people out today. A lot of shoppers and stuff. Even though it's a, a weekday. I'm wondering if this isn't like a, a holiday and I'm just not aware of it. I'm not on Japanese holidays real good yet. Uh, but here we are at the Marui Annex. Uh, kind of my go-to spot. Uh, if I'm going to come look for some games while in Shinjuku. Uh, so we're going to get upstairs. Uh, sixth floor, I believe. And we're going to go to Sudagaya try to get us some games so uh should be a good time all right let's do it gt nara pc engine no takusan no soft mo sono mama tsukaeru shi kamen mo kirei da shi ne kimi tachi likai dekita Getting started with some of these display cases, the cases of broken dreams. There's some expensive and rare stuff in here. Uh, there's Glay Lancer in there. There's some AES games, including some Samurai Spirits, King of Fighters, Final Fantasy for the MSX, which is pretty cool. Uh, not something I come across very often. And then a bunch more Mega Drive games, including, again, Glay Lancer, East, Valis, Genog, Gyarus. Uh, some Gunstar Heroes back there, all good stuff. Uh, all games I was not going to be leaving here <laughs> with today. Because uh, some of this is uh, pretty up there in price. Saturn games, my beloved Saturn. There's some Wolf Fang and there's some Cotton. Uh, the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night has gone crazy as of late. There's also uh, some Cleopatra in there and uh, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, pretty wild in prices. Uh, the Taito Memories 2, very cool. Pink Sweets and Moochie Moochie Pork. 
and uh, some Amoto Kun as well, and uh, more, more, more. Uh, some boxed Super Famicom stuff, more Mega Drive, more everything. There's Violinist of Hamilton. Batman Returns is in there. I don't know when that became an expensive game. And 30000 over 30000 for uh, Turtles in Time, which is insane. I think the last time I saw a box, Turtles in Time, had like a, a hard off or something. It was like a third of that price. That's crazy. They even had some uh, 64 DD games in there. Uh, which I don't have any interest in, but uh, I know some people that do. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but that Turtles in Time, that still shocks me that they're charging that much for it. When did it, when did that happen? Like, literally I was in a hard off, like, I want to say like two months ago, and they had the exact same game for like a third as much money. Um, anyway, I'm not even talking about what we're looking at in these cases. There's some consoles in here. Hey, there's a Kirby. <laughs> so, you know, that'll brighten your day, won't it? Um, there's plenty of cool stuff in here. There's some consoles, controllers, a Super Famicom uh, Junior, I guess. It was like the, the second model they put out. Uh, whatever that was. Uh, box stuff over here. An Xbox, what, is it, what do they call those? Like Series S or whatever, the one that's like all digital. Uh, and I don't like the design of it. It looks kind of, I don't know, it looks like a little weird piece of stereo equipment. It doesn't look good. Uh, it looks just like a speaker. I don't know why it's designed like that. Uh, this is cool little display area. They've got like one of these Retron 5s. They've got some figures over here, gaming related, obviously. We got Cami. There's some art of fighting on the uh, little TV here, so that's cool. On display, art of fighting for the Super Famicom, in case you want to pick that up. And there's some more cool figures here, uh, including this one I thought was cool. I'm a big Darkstalkers fan, and they had this Felicia figure. Even though Felicia, I'm not like, not my favorite character. I'm more of a Dimitri or Lilith kind of guy. And these were really cool. Raiden 5 model kits. Now they had two of them. They had the red and the uh, blue. So that's awesome. I'm a Raiden fan. Even though Raiden 5 is like my least favorite Raiden game. Hey, I'll take a Raiden model kit. Uh, and there's some other cool stuff up there too. Some plushies as we swing by. And then here we had just some more box consoles. Uh, a Mega CD for, they're selling that for like 31,000 yen. It's like 275 bucks or something like that. And some Mega Drive 2s. Uh, some other various cool things in here. Uh, these Taito Egrets and Mega Drive minis and stuff. These are all still fairly inexpensive. Uh, so that's nice at least. An original Mega Drive, core graphics, do R, that's all nice. And then here I thought we'd take a quick look at this little like Mega Drive end cap. They got some uh, Mega Drive plug-and-plays. Okay, I'm not a collector of the plug-and-plays myself. Uh, but I really did want to look at this stuff, though. So we've got some Game Gear here. Boxed Game Gear, which I rarely come across. Uh, so there's Sonic Drift, and there's Puyo Puyo 2. That's really cool. There's some other Game Gear there. Some Mega CD as well. Uh, again, not the most common um, games to come across, Mega CD games. And uh, some of them do tend to be a little bit more expensive. As a consequence of that, this is pretty cool. Illusion City, uh, which is a game, uh, Japan exclusive, similar to Snatcher in many ways. Uh, I think originally a PC game. Um, but that one's pretty cool. And some Sonic CD, 3,500 yen. So that's not too bad. And Soul Feast for 3,000 yen. So those are both like 20-something bucks. Uh, and Night Striker. Well, that's 7,300 yen. That's a little more. Uh, Darius 2. Still 2,500 yen. Valis 3. 6,600. Valis 3 probably... I don't know. It's hard to pick a favorite Valis because they, they're cool enough, but yeah, not great games, if I'm being honest. Uh, some Fatal Fury, some Golden Axe. These aren't too terribly expensive, I guess. 3,000 for Fatal Fury. Uh, when you consider, like, boxed Mega Drive games are usually... Like some of the most expensive. 9,000 for Same Same Same, aka Fire Shark. Uh, one of my favorite Mega Drive shooters. Really amazing game. And then speaking of, what do we got over here? Oh, uh, actually, we got some Sonic. Jim, did you pick up the Thunder Force games? Or were you too stupid? There's Thunder Force, it's right there. What are you doing? Okay, well, Thunder Force 3. There we go. We, at least we got to the Thunder Force 3. Uh, Super Street Fighter 2, Daima Kaimura. Sonic 2, 3200, 
Uh, 6,800 for Sonic 3, give me a break, and 48 for Sonic Spinball, a game I actually like quite a lot. And some Tatsujin, aka Truxton, can't go wrong. Uh, but 7,000 yen. Yeesh, they're not getting any cheaper. We got some bare knuckle and all that. Uh, lots of awesome Mega Drive games. Alright. Cool little N64 display there, but we're not in this aisle for N64. We are up to our knees in PS1 and PS2. Actually, over my head. Uh, 1300 for Hokuto no Ken, which is a pretty fun uh, 3D beat em up, actually. Uh, I think I reviewed that game like a long, long time ago. Uh, the original Metal Slug, 1500. Uh, so the first couple of games we're looking at, not too bad in terms of prices. Uh, Punch the Monkey, Game Edition, with a loop on the third characters. I just grabbed that, I have no idea what the hell Punch the Monkey Game Edition is. And we've got some Rockman Complete Works, they've got one, they've got four. That's really cool. I always, I just like to look at the cover art really of those. Uh, they're really, really good cover art, Rockman 5. And Robit, mon dieu, which is a um, game in the Jumping Flash series. I guess just called Robit, which makes sense. He is a rabbit robot thing in that game. And I think the little bad guys are called Moo Moo's or something. Cho Hatsume Boy, something or other by Taito. Uh, looks like uh, something of a puzzle game, maybe? I don't know. That's actually a new one for me. That's what I like a lot about the PS1 library in Japan. It is so large that there are still plenty of games in it that I'm not really very familiar with, but I do know my Star Gladiators and my Street Fighters and all that kind of good stuff. So it's kind of a mixed bag with the PS1 for me. I know a lot of the big ones and then like some of the more obscure games, but there's just like so many games. And like, how many, like what, 1500 games or something like that or more? I don't even know what the uh, the scale and scope is. Uh, Thunder Force 5, awesome, but it's 7,600 yen. So that's like 60 bucks. Uh, R-Type Delta, cool. Omega Boost, cool. Gamera. Pretty cool, and we have some in the hunt there. 7,800 on the PlayStation. That's a little bit steep. Um, we got some Gradius Deluxe Pack. This I thought was pretty cool. Uh, kind of a Toe Plant collection. Tiger Heli, Kyukoku Tiger, and then Twin Cobra, the uh, North American version, which you don't really need that anymore since the um, the Toa Plant Shooting Garage collections are out on the Switch and other various consoles. Beavis and Butthead. Virtual stupidity. That's right. If you didn't know, the Beavis and Butthead point-and-click PC game uh, got a PS1 release in Japan. Uh, as did the Neverhood, uh, oddly enough. Um, that's something I discovered uh, years ago. So that's cool. Point-and-click PC games are always fun. You can get them on your PlayStation. Now you can play your point-and-clicks with a D-pad. Mujia! Uh, looks kind of cute, whatever it is. Uh, puzzle game, so... Right on. I do love me a good puzzle game. And then this, um... Uh, Tokimeki Memorial Puzzle Dama. Which is, uh, as the name implies, a puzzle game featuring Tokimeki Memorial characters. And then... Twin B Puzzle Dama, or Puzzuru Dama. Uh, which is... Puzzle Dama with Twin B characters instead of Tokimeki Memorial characters. Uh, and then we got some Magical Drop. We got a lot of puzzle games. That's nice. That's right up my alley. I think that's maybe a little bit of an understated thing. I play a lot of shoot 'em ups and beat 'em ups and fighting games on this channel. Very cool uh, Legend of Mana uh, set there. I think they made a bunch of those actually. They did like Legend of Mana, Brave Fencer Musashi. They made a bunch of them in that style. Oh, well, yeah, I'm a big old puzzle game fanatic. I like them a lot. Uh, moving on from PS1, though, PS2. 
And as you can see, you could spend all day in this shop. Uh, they got so many PS2 games. Namco Cross Capcom right here, 2100. Uh, another game I reviewed many years ago. Um, pretty cool little uh, RPG featuring lots and lots of Namco and Capcom characters. I did enjoy that game quite a lot. Uh, we've got some other stuff there. Persona 3, etc., etc. Tales of Destiny 2. Uh, which I don't think I ever played the second one. I played the first one on the PS1 and liked it a lot. And we've got other cool stuff like Gauntlet, a little bit more American-y stuff. Some dungeon crawling. Uh, I do like that. I do like the Gauntlet games. Uh, I play the old arcade game when I go to Natsuge Museum every once in a while. Macross for 1800. Uh, which is pretty cool as well. It's uh, an air combat game, but it's Macross, so you can transform your Valkyrie into all kinds, you know, it's all its different mech forms and stuff. Uh, so that's cool. Trail of uh, Fizag, Fizak, whatever. Some kind of Taito shooter. Looks like it has uh, more than one in it. Uh, I couldn't really tell. Like, sometimes, like, they have nonsensical English titles for games, and then it's written in katakana, and it's like, what the hell am I supposed to pronounce this? A uh, 7100 for Dodon Pachi Daiojo, which many people think is the best bullet hell shooter ever made. But take heart, ladies and gents, because M2 is going to be releasing it soon on modern consoles. And Gradius 5, published by Konami, but developed by Treasure. And a uh, good game. I like more. I'm more of a Gradius 2 or 3 kind of guy, but uh, still pretty cool. And uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind, uh, the better of the two uh, 3D JoJo games on the PS2, in my opinion. It's a pretty cool game. Cool graphics, uh, interesting, kind of weird gameplay, as you might expect for a JoJo game. We got some Initial D. We have this, uh, Cyber Formula. Um, I reviewed a Cyber Formula game on the GameCube many years ago. They're pretty fun, just like kind of futuristic-y anime racing games. Kind of like uh, transform your car and whatever else. Uh, this is pretty cool if you want to uh, live the life of a Japanese trucker with their very elaborately designed uh, 18-wheelers. Uh, well, now you can with uh, whatever the hell that game was called. I uh, got some good fighting games down here. We've got the Art of Fighting Collection. We've got Sega Ages 2500 Virtua Fighter 2. Um, what is this? Spectral... I, uh, it, Jim, you're too fast with the spines. Um, spectral something or other versus something or other 2D fighter. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's one I actually have not played yet. I've played all of these down here, though. So there's the Last Blade Collection. There's Rumblefish. There's Melty Blood Actress again, which is a fantastic fighter. And then for 600 yen, there's Yu Yu Hakusho Forever with a variant cover that I'd never seen before. So that's cool. Uh, anyway, PS1... Here's two games. A lot of them. How are you? It's amazing, right? How did you get rid of that fight? You won't forget it. Alright, as we pass some uh, not-so-good-looking consoles, uh, what do we have here but some Nintendo 64? Um... Kind of an underappreciated console on my channel, really. I think in general, uh, retro gamers, uh, there are some channels that really go hard on the N64 stuff, but I feel like everybody is all about, uh, and the retro gaming community anyway, it's like 16-bit and under, and maybe like 32 bits. Um, N64, like everyone else, not my favorite of the Nintendo consoles. Um, I was a PlayStation kid back in the day, but in retrospect, Violence Killer, <laughs> a.k.a. Turok, in case you didn't know. Turok is called Violence Killer in Japan, which is pretty cool. But in retrospect, getting to go back and try the uh, N64 games I missed, uh, they're really good in retrospect. Not better. I, you know, I still take my PlayStation. Why am I talking about all that? We got Super Famicom games here. Twin B, Kirby, uh, rushing Beat, one of the Rushing Beat games. What are those all called in English? It's like Rival Turf and I think Brawl Brothers and another one. Mickey's Tokyo Disney Adventure, pretty cool. Um, you'll notice here, it's like um, 
uh, as I'm going through this, Super Famicom, Super Double Dragon, hello. Am I going to say the name of every game? Uh, as I'm going through this section, um, there are, like, little, like, empty spots. And so, uh, it, it's plain to see that, um, because they did, like, rearrange some shelves and things like that. But it is plain to see that uh, since last year, with borders opening back up, like, collectors have been coming by. I know some people, they do come to Japan, Tokyo specifically, uh, for no other reason than to go uh, pick up retro games. And so, um, I had a conversation about this with uh, my friend Lewis, and it was actually published on his channel. I'll actually, uh, I'll put a link to that down in the description. Go say hi to Lewis, aka Zest Retro. But we had a conversation about that, where some people were saying like, oh, I went to the shops and Tokyo, I went to Akihabara, I went here, there, and it's been picked clean! There's nothing! There's nothing there! Um, which is obviously not true, I mean, you're looking here, I mean, in this shop alone, there's just like thousands of games. Uh, we got Super Famicom and Famicom, you saw all kinds of PlayStation, PS2, uh, in just a minute we're gonna look at Saturn, and uh, PC Engine, and Dreamcast, so, in this one shop, there are, like, a lot, a lot of games. I think what it comes down to is, um... Uh, if somebody comes looking for specific things and they can't find what they want exactly, then... Well, geez, there's just nothing here. Uh, when actually there's a lot here. Hey, we got some Akumajo Dracula, 2800 yen, 33 for Metroid. We just looked at a whole bunch of Super Famicom games. I didn't even really commentate on those, but there was, like, Thunder Spirits... And there was World Heroes, all kinds of stuff. We got some Rockman here. Rockman 2, 1600, 15 for 4. That's actually um, not too bad of prices right now. Uh, especially Rockman 2. For whatever reason, that one usually demands a little bit more money. But we got Super Dodgeball. We got Kunio Soccer League, um, 900 for... I forget that the long, long-ass title of that one. Uh, but we got Dragon Ball. We got all kinds of stuff. Uh, we got some Goonies, the old standby Goonies. We got some YY World, that's nice too. There's some Saint Seiya, Star Luster, Sky Kid, uh, some uh, Captain Tsubasa. Those are, you know, pretty cool if you like your soccer games. I think those were translated and released somewhere. Uh, Binary Land, great game. Uh, Niketsu Kakuto Densetsu, Ninja Ryukinden, aka Ninja Gaiden. So lots of stuff. Uh, in terms of Famicom games, and we swing right around. And what are we confronted with? A huge wall of boxed uh, Super Famicom and Famicom games. This is kind of cool. These little cases. This would, uh, you take this up if you want a copy of Kiki Kai Kai for your Famicom disc. And uh, they'll take that to the back and go get that game for you. It's a great way to uh, save some shelf space, if you ask me. Uh, Niketsu Hakibu, a game I've talked about, like, a million freaking times before. It's a great game, the best, uh, hockey game on the Famicom, if you ask me. Better than Ice Hockey, which I always thought Ice Hockey was super fun, just get a bunch of fat guys and knock everyone around. 4,000 for Dragon Quest, just the original Dragon Quest, uh, I believe. Oh no, that's Dragon Quest 2. Uh, that's, that's kind of insane, because that game is common as dirt, and then 1,300. Uh, for Kunio, super long title that I always forget, and I'm really not very good at reading kanji anyway. So, let's, I can just take it out of my memory, I'm just not gonna get it. Super Mario 3, 3800. Um, again, some of these, they just, I don't know, it's like a store gets a boxed game, and they're like, oh, obviously it's worth way more money. It's like, dude, come on. We got like 20 copies of this, except for Tetris Battle Gaiden, 2400 for a complete copy. Uh, which is funny, when I first came to Japan in like 2010, that was like a $50 game. And it's like 20 bucks now. That actually depreciated in value for whatever reason. I guess that somebody found a whole bunch of box copies in an old warehouse. They forgot about this. Uh, the Taekwondo Super Famicom game. Uh, which I've only ever played a ROM of. Uh, it's not very good. But it's interesting that it's like a, just a strictly Taekwondo game. Uh, what do we got here? We got some Sailor Moon S, 54 Hundy. And, uh, that's not really a great game. It's a fighting game, but not a particularly good one. And we've got some Final Fight boxed. That's nice. 4,000 yen, though. Hmm, that's a wee bit steep. 
And uh, some fighter's history, 5,500, which I do not, I do not come across. Uh, I do not come across fighter's history very much. At least not on the Super Famicom. 31 for Pop and Twin B. That's, that's okay, I guess. That's like 25 bucks. 51 for Kirby 3, though. Eh, I don't know why that's so expensive. Again, like first party Nintendo stuff. Kind of stuff that sells like hotcakes. 25 for Dodgy Donpei. Which, if you're not aware, uh, Dodgy Donpei, they're dodgeball games. They play kind of a lot like uh, Super Dodgeball with all the uh, Kunio Kun characters. Uh, Hokuto no Ken 6. Uh, just a bit of advice, like all of the 8 bits, well, not all of the 8 bit, but like um, the uh, Hokuto no Ken, like RPGs and, and all that stuff, and uh, the fighting games, especially on the Super Famicom, they are terrible. Don't waste your time. But uh, uh, Parodies Da, awesome game. Muscle Bomber, love it. 4600 for a complete copy. Love to see a new Muscle Bomber game. We haven't had one since like Muscle Bomber 2 or something. World Heroes 2, uh, you know, pretty cool. Actually, you know, of all the kind of like Street Fighter 2, kind of like follow up knockoff kind of games back in the day. Uh, the World Heroes games, I think, are maybe, like, some of the best. The, they, they at least have a fun gimmick, all these characters from different periods of time and everything. Uh, some Shodai Niketsu Kunio-kun, which has not been re-released yet. I know there's, like, the River City Girls Zero or whatever it is, which is, like, Shin Niketsu Koha. But no, they've never re-released Shodai Niketsu uh, Kunio-kun, which is a sequel to River City Ransom that takes place in Osaka. And it's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. And we got some Zelda. We got some Seiken Densetsu 3. We got some Star Fox. We got all these great Famicom, Super Famicom games. Ah, if you're, an, if you're a Nintendo fan, you'd be in heaven. Alright, the final leg of this game hunting trip, and what do we see first but some uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth. Great game, and 2600 yen, so it's like 20 bucks. Uh, that's not a bad deal on there. There's some other cool stuff uh, we're going to see here. This is kind of something we're going to notice. Uh, I think there's Magical Hoppers, which is called, I think, Pandemonium in North America. They, like, reskinned it for Japan, Marvel versus... Uh, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Capcom, here, uh, Popoy, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, we're gonna notice, like, some of these prices are just, like, all over the place. Uh, so some of them are okay, some of them are, like, pretty good. Others, though, are, are just, like, kind of head-scratching. Um, we're looking at, like, Load Runner, uh, Layer Section 2, Rockman X3. Um, it feels like sometimes, if you're at Sudagaya, uh, which this is cool, the, the VHS uh, included version of Ten uh, Game Tengoku. And not a bad price on that either. And some Sega Mark III games here too, which I don't normally see. Uh, so that's cool, including Alesta. Like, that's just great. A complete copy of Alesta. Like, I'd never come across that. Um, but as we look at some of the Saturn games and some of the Dreamcast games, um, I was seeing, again, just like way better prices at like the last hard off I went to. And I feel like, I don't know, Sudagaya, maybe to them, like, if it says Sega, like, oh, this is really collectible. It must be, like, worth, like, three times more than all the other stuff. Uh, so, yeah, maybe when you come to Sudagaya, mostly come for, like, the Famicom and Super Famicom stuff. Uh, some of the Sega stuff, you, you might be better off just trying your luck at some hard-offs or whatever. But we got all these Capcom fighters, there's Vampire Savior, Vampire Hunter, Children of the Atom, X-Men vs. Street Fighter. All the classics, all the good stuff you want. And uh, on top of them all, the uh, <laughs> Quarterback Club, 97. Finally, the, the search, the long, long search is over. I can get me a copy of Quarterback Club. Uh, Gunbird for 3800 and then Gun Griffin 2 is 3600 and 4000 for uh, just a regular game, Tengoku, so Fatal Fury 3. Yeah, I think that Gun Griffin 2 is a little overpriced, if you ask me, but uh, what can you do? And uh, some uh, butt cheeks. Because, you know, every now and again, you, can, you just need a Saturn game with some butt cheeks in there. And some Capcom 
Generations, which those are pretty cool. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. This one, uh, Generations 1, with like 1942 and 43, and I think 1943 Kai. And there's also Guardian Heroes, Gale Racer, uh, Golden Axe, The Duel. The Golden Axe 2D Fighter you never knew you wanted. Because you probably didn't, because it's, you know, it's not that good. Uh, with some Strikers, 1945. I think Sui Koenbu. This is a decent little fighter by Data East. Sonic Wings, special. And Darius 2. Darius 2. And they also had Darius Gaiden. All, all good stuff, but... Um, at, uh, I mean, yeah, again, it's, you know, it's a Sudagaya. It's a store for, you know, collectibles. So a lot of this is collector's prices. What can you do? You're gonna, you can't fix the whole scene by yourself, I guess. Uh, but Dreamcast games are coming to now, including 18 Wheeler, which is very near and dear to my heart. I like that game. Vampire Chronicles. And UFC, for whatever reason. Capcom publishing UFC back in the day. Oh, good old 18 Wheeler. I loved um, that uh, arcade cabinet with the giant 18 Wheeler steering wheel. Like playing with that as like a 12 year old was like super cool. And uh, Capcom vs. SNK, the uh, original and the pro editions. So you can look at the uh, different covers there. 11,800 yen for Mars Matrix. So that's like a $90 game right now. 8,800 yen for Gunbird 2, which is classic. But now with the advent of the Psycho Shooting Collections, you don't really need that unless you're a collector. Still 400 though for Shinmu. They don't, they don't really demand a lot of high prices for Jimu. Uh, 9400 for Kikayo, which is, of course, Tech Romancer, and that's another one that's getting more expensive. A lot of the Capcom stuff is starting to get up there. Those are some of the more desirable games, I think you could say. Dreamcast, Capcom games, some of the best on the platform. Um, and speaking of, Marvel vs. Capcom 2... Other great stuff. Even though back in the day, I had my MVC2 on the Xbox. And Moiro Justice Gakuen, a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Project Justice. Uh, I, I need another Rival Schools in my life. As we come over to this PC Engine section, I think they got some, some Super Star Soldier on the TV there. So that's pretty cool. Controllers and cables. But we got a boxed Duo R. 32,000 yen, so that's probably in the neighborhood of 280 bucks. Core graphics and some arcade cards. And this is another console where we're gonna see some of the prices are kind of okay, but then others are just like head scratching. Um, Outrun, very cool. Atomic Robo Kid, pretty fun. Legendary Axe, I always forget the Japanese title. Obo, Obokun, or whatever it is. Afterburner 2, etc., etc. So we're going to see a lot of stuff here all over the place. Um, PC Engine, a console I love. We've got Gradius 2, which is just an amazing version of that game. Also, they mixed the Hue cards and the uh, CDs all together. Gunhead, a.k.a. Blazing Lasers, and Gradius, the original. My favorite console port of that game, in case you didn't know. but So there's a lot of stuff here, a variety of games to choose from. It's just the prices are a little wild in some instances. We got Street Fighter 2, we got Xevious, which you could argue that that's because uh, so much of it has, um, you know, been bought up in recent years. And maybe somebody got the, they dropped the dime. Hey, all the, uh, the game hunting tourists are coming back now. We might want to increase some prices here. Uh, bu uh, boost that profit margin. Help the Japanese economy for crying out loud. Uh, Bomberman 94, 1800, so that's like, what, a 14, 13, 14 dollar game. Not bad at all for what is a really fun game. Um, some Wataru though, 4100, that's Keith Courage, one of the other Legendary Axe games. And uh, some Motor Rotor, so those are okay, those are kind of fun. Um, what else we got here? Again, as you can see, just a nice big old shelf. We got Raisin Bar 2, 5800 bucks, so that's like, what? 46, 47 bucks, and Red Alert, which I actually quite like, uh, the kind of cheesy cutscenes and run and gun, another Rambo knockoff character, uh, what do we got here, come on GM, pull it together, stop knocking stuff all around, all of the Valus games, or at least most of them, 
Uh, those are not so great, but prices were okay. And then East 1 and 2, complete with the spine card and all, and in great shape, 2100 yen. Making it about a $17 game, I think? That's a good price on that for the condition and everything. Uh, Gate of Thunder, though, not so not so cheap. There's 94 and 8200 and Guts and Diner, which I myself am not too familiar with. We got some Cosmic Fantasy. All that great stuff. Plenty of classics, including Zack. And I ain't talking about Morris. And uh, the first Valus, which that's probably actually the best of the bunch. It's just the, the remake of the original Valus. And Snatcher, uh, classic and still really, you know, affordable on the PC Engine. 2,400 yen, so that's probably like a $19, $18 game. Tengai Makyo, Zirya! And some... Uh, Super, or not Super Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2, and some, uh, yeah, so just a whole lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, that's it for all these games, lots of stuff, but hey, let's get the hell out of here! Alright, so that'll do it for Suda Guy today. Look at this. It was so nice and sunny when I went inside. Kind of overcast now. Oh well. It's getting a little later, getting a little cold. Uh, anyway, yeah, that was uh, Suragaya. Nice. Um, I picked up a few games, got them in the backpack here. Uh, I think I'll save them for a future episode of more games, though. But I did get some pretty cool stuff. I didn't get anything like crazy, anything too expensive. Um, you could tell that definitely, like collectors are showing up and buying like a lot of games because there were less games. There weren't no games. I'm not gonna be all dramatic about it and be like oh there's no games it was picked clean but uh it was noticeably less um the prices were also kind of all over the place some of the games were priced like really well uh some were typical and then some were like way too freaking expensive like way too high like double or triple what i'm finding them for like you know hard offs and book offs and things um so yeah it's kind of a mixed bag but uh Overall, happy with what I picked up today. And like I said, I'll show all that stuff off in a future pickups video. What is this noise coming from this freaking thing? It's just a big truck that drives around annoying people with god awful music. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, today's little game hunt and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, goodbye.